What's up guys, it's Drew here from EchoWorks. Um, I had a lot of time to think on vacation and uh, especially after playing bumper ships. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, the last three videos, go check them out. Um, but I got to thinking, I was like, hey, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, what is it like to daily drive an S54 E30? So why not do a video about that? Um, roll the intro and I'll fill you guys in. Now turn up. So, what is it like to daily drive an S54 E30? Well, let me give you a quick rundown here. I made a little list, so if I'm looking over here, that's where I'm looking. Uh, first things first, the history of the vehicle, uh, of the car. Um, I have a video here. If you have not seen it, go watch it after this video. If you have seen it, thank you. Uh, so yeah, this is an 88 325 E30. Uh, first things first is the engine. It's an S54 B32 out of a 2003 E46 M3 that I got from Springfield, Missouri and uh it's stock that it really is it's stock uh it has an r uh it has a tune from castle motorsport so it's like a 15 horsepower bump deletes the secondary air pump the ews and uh the cold start um and it has modified headers to actually fit into the engine bay that's it that is that is really it uh it has the wpc treated rod bearings in it so I could sleep at night because I need my beauty rest because God help me face. <laughs> um, but seriously though, uh, I could sleep at night knowing that the bottom end of this engine is not going to come apart. Knock on wood. It's been going strong for two years now. Um, next thing on the list, transmission. The transmission, it's a stock Gatrag 420G. Same thing that's going into the S62. Uh, the clutch. The clutch, I can't remember the brand name of it, but it's a stage one clutch. And uh, I re uh, everything in this car is new, so it has a new uh, master uh, clutch master cylinder and clutch slave cylinder. It's not very heavy uh, compared to some cars that I've driven. Uh, my buddy's E30, uh, it's stock. Here's a picture of it. I drive it from time to time. His clutch is kind of heavier than mine, to be honest, and his is stock. Like his is direct replacement. Mine is stage one and it feels so much better. I love the clutch feel in this car. You could really feel that friction zone. So it's really easy to, to drive, especially with the throttle response of the S54 compared to the M20, it's miles in front of it. Um, suspension. I have KW, uh, no. I wish I had KW uh, coilovers, they're awesome. Um, I've ridden and driven a few cars that have KW coilovers, awesome. I have K-Sport Customs on this car. Uh, the ride is very comfortable, it's very compliant. Um, you definitely know if you hit a pothole, that's for sure. But uh, very, co very comfortable, no complaints. Uh, I actually, one small one, I do wish they were a little stiffer. I have them turned all the way up as stiff as they will go. I just wish it was just a little bit stiffer. I do have, um, 88D poly bushings from Revshift. Those guys are awesome, so shout out to them. Uh, they've been nothing but the best for both of these cars and another E30 that I built. And uh, it rides great, the bushings are great. They don't squeak. I've had people say that, oh, your car's gonna squeak in a few months. No, well, uh, this car has been going. It's had poly bushings for five years. And uh, they haven't squeaked. And so when I, re when I did the S54 swap, I put new bushings in them again. Um, brakes. Brakes are manual brakes. I have no brake booster because it won't fit with the, uh, the air box unless you significantly modify the air box or get a different booster. Wasn't really into that. So I have E46 M3 uh, brakes in the front and E46 ZHP in the rear. Uh, the brake bias is spot on. Uh, you stand on those brakes and the car just sits right down. Um, if you stand on them too hard, you can lock up the brakes, but you know, you'll, you'll find that limit. Um, just like with the clutch pedal, the brake pedal has a lot of feedback. So, you know, uh, you can, uh, you know, modulate it depending, you know, you're coming up to a turn and you can really, the car really talks to you. And I love that about this car. BMWs are all about feedback and it's great. Um, yeah, the brakes are the brakes are fantastic. I have, all the, like I said, no no booster and um, I'm not going to a booster on this car because of this. That and it won't fit uh, <laughs> because the V8's pretty big. 
Um, the exhaust. The exhaust is um, in this video. So if you've seen this video, you know what it sounds like. If you haven't, go watch it after this. Uh, it is uh, the modified OEM headers into an X pipe straight back to uh, an eBay muffler. And uh, honestly, I love it. Uh, when you are driving around town, it's very quiet, very not noticeable. And then uh, when you're about 35 to 4,000 RPM, it really starts to open up. And with the window down or windows down and the sunroof back on a 75 degree day, man, I, ooh. Sometimes I just turn down the music and I just listen to the exhaust because it's that good. It's not very raspy. Uh, with that X-Pipe, I think that really does solve a lot of the raspiness to it. Um, all that I have left are the issues. Uh, I haven't had any major issues. Uh, I have written down the exhaust cam sensor. Short story, short story shorter. Uh, when the engine was pulled out of the E46 M3 up in Springfield to get the motor, they crushed one of the plugs on the exhaust cam sensor and it's too short to have a new uh, plug put on. So, and a, a used harness for an S54 is almost as much as a new one, and that's just stupid. Um, so I get a code about once a week, and I have an onboard OBD reader, OBD2 reader, so I just clear it when it comes up, and that's it. That's how I dealt with that. Um, the uh, crankcase ventilation valve uh, went out on me twice, very close to each other, and they were OEM, they were BMW. I put an oil catch can on there and it solved the problem. So I don't, I'm not burning oil and I'm not burning through uh, crankcase ventilation valves. Uh, the only other complaint that I have is the wiggly rear end. I think that has a little bit to do with the sway bar in the rear. Yes, the sway bar tabs are still, still on there. They, they haven't broken off. Uh, I do need to reinforce them though. Um, I am going to try to go to the next size up on the sway bar. Maybe that'll kind of solve it or uh, get an adjustable one. Other than that, oh, okay, let me, let me elaborate a little bit. The rear end gets wiggly like around a turn. When you're about halfway through a turn and you start feeding the throttle through, the, the rear end kind of gets a little weird feeling. Just, I don't know, maybe if somebody else drove it, they would be like, oh, it's normal. But to me, it just kind of stands out a little bit. That's really about it. Um, aside from the axles coming apart, <laughs> that was my bad. I did a burnout and um, the passenger side axle was like, nope, I'm done. But it was original. So uh, I have new ones on there and I haven't had a problem with them. If you guys want to see a video of the interior and how it's set up in there, uh, it does have a full interior, uh, down in the comments, let me know and I'll shoot a video for that. You guys can see how that's set up. Uh, it is on 17s, if I didn't mention that before. Uh, they're on 40 profile in the rear and 45 in the front for you know suspension related stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's really about it for this. I really appreciate you guys watching this and um, you guys are awesome. It is January 1st, so Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we waited 100 years uh, for the Roaring Twenties again, so let's make it awesome. Uh, which leaves me to say, remember to do awesome, be awesome, and stay awesome. You guys are great. I'll see you next week. Have a good weekend.